Hello and let's talk about the legacies of MS Dhoni. The former Indian skipper retired from all forms of international cricket very symbolically on August 15th. Dhoni, who played 90 tests, 350 one-day internationals and 98 T20 matches, was one of the legends of Indian cricket, no doubt. His captaincy saw some major landmarks, including the famous victory in the 2011 World Cup. Dhoni's retirement has been a topic of discussion for quite some time and his last international match was the semi-finals of the 2019 World Cup against New Zealand. He was clearly India's most successful captain and his legacy, both the positive and the negative aspects, continues and will continue to be felt for quite some time. We spoke to Leslie Xavier on some of these aspects. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So, the big news last week was, of course, the retirement of MS Dhoni as well as uh, Suresh Raina. And now there's been a lot of discussion about his contributions, a lot of glowing tributes from his teammates, uh, those from the establishment, even uh, the highest authorities in the country. So let's take a look at some of these issues today. And uh, one of the key issues, of course, is the idea of the legacy a player leaves behind. And there's, of course, one way of looking at it, which is the quantitative aspect, the numbers, the matches. But uh, both in Dhoni's case, in positive and negative terms, it's much more uh, bigger than that. So uh, let's say, could we, could we first start maybe talking about your idea of how you evaluate a player's legacy itself, as in what maybe are the benchmarks even, although it's like we said, difficult to exactly point it down, but what would be the, some of the key benchmarks? So it's, uh, firstly, uh, let's also remember Suresh Raina because everyone seemed to have forgotten Suresh yeah. Raina. But that's how he has built his career. He was always uh, playing second fiddle to Dhoni or Kohli later in his playing career internationally. But always a second fiddle to, and, and I mean, a sidekick to Dhoni, so to speak, both, both at the club, CSK, and as well as at the, in the national team setup. And getting back to Dhoni and legacy as, a, as such, uh, player, player legacy. So in cricket, there are, uh, there are two distinct aspects to look into when we talk about legacy. First, in Dhoni's case, first is, uh, because in Suresh Raina says it would have been simple. It's, it's, it's a player legacy we are talking about. But in Dhoni's case, we have to talk about the legacy of the wicketkeeper batsman as a player and also as a skipper of, right. of the team. And in the Indian team setup, or generally also if you look at international teams in cricket, the captain has a big role to play as far as uh, uh, the building of the current lot is concerned and also building a team towards the future. So, a classic example I would like to give is uh, when we talk about cricket history, we talk about uh, Clive Lloyd and the role that he played in shaping the all-conquering West Indies side. And he was a skipper. And he, he, he is always considered as the pivotal figure. There were a lot of stars. That, that team was full of stars. Reeve Richards, Michael Holding. Who, I mean, you just close your eyes and point a finger, you will be pointing at a star. So, the same thing applies to... Uh, uh, the Australian side of the 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, so that transition of the side began, began with a, a great Aussie captain, uh, Alan Border, and then uh, Mark Taylor okay. took it forward. And then it, uh, Steve Waugh inherited a, a, a momentum with the team, a beautiful team that was built over the last previous 10 years. And then just he just dominated the next 10 years. And even the Australian side took a dip after that golden generation period where they, they I mean, uh, arguably they're still trying to get, get things figured out as far as getting back to where they were 10 years back. Right. So that's, that's the role that the captains have to play in cricket in a larger sense. Uh, you mold the current team as world beaters, but also ensure that you blend in youngsters into a system which, which takes the team forward to the next level, not necessarily just World Cup winners. We, we, let's just not, let's, because, because see, World Cup as a tournament, an individual tournament, uh, victory, losses, I mean, all these things are uh, not exactly an asterisk I would look into, but generally the team's domination over a period, that's what, that's what, the strength of the team or the greatness of the team lies. And such kind of a uh, building, I mean, whether Dhoni was able to, as a leader of, of the team, make uh, make that crucial link between two generations, mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's, that would be his real legacy. And uh, when, we, when we talk about his contribution to cricket, that's the biggest uh, catchphrase that's been doing the round. Dhoni is, thank you for your contribution to cricket. We should not just 
think in terms of two World Cups, but think also in terms of what the kind of setup and the team that he gave handed over to Virat Kohli, the next in line as skipper. Right. <clears throat> so in this context, uh, let's maybe say start from the beginning, in the sense that when he did get the team and he were when he did become the captain, he was actually in some senses given a team which was already moving towards its peak. And that was actually, uh, that played a major role, especially in the 2011 World Cup. Uh, so, uh, he took over the T20 captaincy to start with 2007 World Cup. And it was a disastrous year till then for Indian cricket because they played atrociously bad at the ODI World Cup in the West Indies. They lost in the first round, came back. And uh, in fact, Dhoni cites it as one of the turning points of his career, the kind of uh, mob, uh, I mean, the attacks that happened around his house and he was not allowed to travel to Ranchi, he, was, he stayed put in Delhi for safety concerns, etc. So, uh, that's the T20. Um, so, T20 was a new concept at that point. And people say that Dhoni made the best out of a very, I mean, Ragtag team, so to speak, not exactly a team full of legends. Yeah, we had, they had great explosive players like you had Singh Srishan, great short, short over format, fast bowler. They had good names in it in the mix as well, as far as the team is concerned. But then the format was new. BCCI decided that they are not sending some of the bigger players, mm -hmm. they're arresting them because they were not very keen, they didn't understand the new format, they were not very, uh, I mean open about its potential that he had. IPL changed that, obviously. Now, 10 to 12 years down the road, we know what exactly this format has done for cricket. And with in that, is, in that setup, Dhoni steps in. And Dhoni, as a cricketer, it was perfect for Dhoni. The format as well as the kind of team that he had. Because then he could exert the kind of leadership which had become his hallmark in the later years, which right. we celebrate now also. The maverick right. nature of his decisions. The... Right. The logic, the the street smart logic, if I can call that, that he brings onto the playing field, and uh, which which uh, I mean, and revolutionary ideas as well, just like his batting, and uh, uh, which which catch opponents by surprise. Most mm -hmm. of his field settings, the change of bowling, uh, the the kind of uh, uh, I mean, point by point, ball by ball observations and tips that he gives to bowlers when they bowl, saying that he's go, yeah, I mean, these, these are caught on camera, caught on the right. microphone, the way he talks to his bowlers. I mean, not just saying shabash, shabash, which was the role of the wicketkeeper from the earlier days, but but giving exact inputs, mm -hmm. so this guy will get out. Mm -hmm. So, it, it the the format was perfect for him. The leader, the style of players that he had under him was perfect for him. He made the best out of it, and yeah, with a, with a bit of luck and whatever, he, he made he made victory out of it. But the larger setup was the ODI setup, which which mm -hmm. which took years in the making till Dhoni inherited that team, and it had legends in it. It had uh, Sachin Tendulkar to start with, Virendra Serva, VVS was there in the setup, Dravid was there. So some of the Greatest players to have ever played in India was there in that setup, and a team that was, I mean, more or less complete in its transition from where it was when. So the, let's let's go back to that. The, this team's roots. It started in early 2000 after that right. match fixing scandal when uh, Saurabh Ganguly took over as the as the skipper and foreign coaches started leading the Indian side. So, it right. started with John Wright and then yeah. Greg Chappell. So, Dhoni's entry into the national team setup came around Greg Chappell. And Greg Chappell has been quoted multiple times uh, about the vision that he had for Dhoni. He always felt that Dhoni has, was a natural leader. He was fearless. He had a lot of qualities which he correlated with Aussie qualities as far as players are concerned. And uh, then came Gary Kirsten. So, so with this, uh, I mean, player, the coaches who were at some point legends in the game themselves coming in and into a system where there was always hero worship as far as captains or the leaders of the team and the seniors in the team is concerned. These coaches were able to break that kind of a system. Greg right. Chappell, not so successfully because he felt he had a lot of issues with people like Ganguly, etc. But uh, uh, Gary Kirsten was able to Part, partly because of the nature that he carries himself with. He was able to break into that mold and then he got 
someone like Dhoni to uh, execute his plans. Dhoni himself had his own inputs, things like that. It worked perfectly. So he had a team in a platter. It's, I'm not saying Dhoni didn't have contribution in that team. But if you look at that 2011 World Cup winning team, the team was brimming with legendary players. If they had not made it into the final and won that championship, they would have... Of course, we all, as fans, we always think that all the Indian teams underachieved at the World <laughs> Cup. But this team, for sure, if they had not won that World Cup, they would have under, under, underachieved grossly. And Dhoni uh, was there. And he led the sure. team perfectly because even with the greatest of teams and the greatest of players, you need a leader who could bind it all together. And Dhoni had that kind of a persona, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, so that, that's, yeah, that's so, my assessment as far as his, his, his leadership is concerned. The leadership. But let's move to towards the end of his career as a captain, since you were talking about these aspects. Was he able to do pretty much the same to the team regarding what he got? I mean, compared to what he got, as in the transition you talked about, which is perhaps the most important aspect of a captain's legacy, one of the key aspects of his functions, has the same kind of transition process was that set in place when it, the captaincy was handed over to Kohli? So, it's, it's, it's a very subjective issue because uh, when we look at numbers again, so under Kohli, the team has done admirably well except for uh, the ICC tournaments where they have failed in the… I mean, failing in the semis is not an achievement in ICC tournaments when you consider that there are only 10 teams playing. Okay. So, let's just be very clear. You reach the final, otherwise you are… And being India, the kind of resources and the kind of uh, money that is there in the game, you better reach that final and better win it. <laughs> I mean, at least reaching the final is this thing. So, uh, Kohli received a team from Dhoni, the test team first and then the then the shorter format teams. But the interesting point is that there was, uh, Dhoni was in the World Cup, last World Cup team and the idea was that Dhoni will bring in experience, will bring in things that would help Kohli. So, there itself, there is a bit of a, uh, what do you call that, conflict of interest as far as Dhoni's legacy and Dhoni's continuation in the in the team setup because his presence is important because the next leader doesn't have that kind of a capability of reading the game. So, I mean, is, is it Dhoni's responsibility to nurture the next line of skipper? You bet it is because… Uh, it's, it's the same in any arena. If, if you look at a corporate set setup, you, right. you, you want the current CEO to nurture second line of uh, mm -hmm. leaders so that the company is taken forward. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, it's a failure. And the same thing applies to any sporting setup. A political system also. We have seen uh, empires collapse because, because there was single leadership, strength, strength concentrated on single leadership right. in right. political parties. The same thing applies here. So, Kohli the transition from Kohli's uh, captaincy to the kind of players that Kohli has under, under him. So, Dhoni had a bunch of legends in the team. Uh, current uh, the Indian team setup as a lot of players who are talented. We have number one ODI bowler. We have good batsmen. We have Rohit Sharma, for instance, who is a tremendous short format batsman. Uh, bunch of decent players, very talented. Some would co-own and mark themselves as great in the future, hopefully. But there is not kind of a awe-inspiring figure or figures in that setup yet. So, and that 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 requires years of build-up. It's not like a talented player comes in and same thing applied with Kohli. So, I have, I have had this discussion with the people who were involved in the team setup when Kohli came into the scene, 2008-2009, thereabouts. The trainer, uh, the physio was involved, physical aspect of it, one of the batting coaches. They all said the youngsters who were coming into the setup when the legends were there playing game regularly, was that they were allowed freedom. You developed your game, you practice, you be in the setup, you get your game, you train, you fail, you come back, you work on it. So that kind of a building, building setup was there for these youngsters, which was partially implemented of course, by uh, Dhoni's presence and partially because the leadership, the coaches also had that kind of a vision. The right. current uh, manager uh, or coach, uh, Revi Shastri and uh, Virat Kohli, their setup works slightly diff differently. It's evident from the way things are. And uh, uh, when we look at building a site for the future and building a site for the present, 
it's 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 not happening anymore and the, that kind of a culture shift started towards the fag end of dhoni's stint as as captain because ultimately you get into that result cycle and mm-hmm. building a building a uh, leaving legacy lasting legacy as far as the result is concerned so mm-hmm. that happened a little i think right yeah and also finally the key issue of uh dhoni as a captain captain outside the field too as a representative of uh india india his club's cricket uh, the country's cricket because we also went through a time when with the nature of media attention that was happening with the kind of money that was happening the captain also becomes far and f- more and more a pivotal figure so in those aspects do you think that of course there were a lot of ways and a lot of things he said a lot of attempts he made to sort of stand out outside the field also but do you how do you how do you sort of square his legacy at the end of uh, when we look at it right now in terms of off field uh, say performance or off field positions and uh, the role he occupied so dhoni is uh, role has always centered around cricket that way yeah of course the kind of stances that he is is love for the how arm forces and uh, the stances that he has taken is it's questionable we ourselves here at news click have questioned some of his antics if i can call it that and uh, uh, but otherwise within the cricket circle itself there are certain question as questionable aspects which i feel we should uh, we should uh, mention also when we discuss dhoni's i mean now that he's retired and when we discuss his long career i mean great career no doubt and uh, it's uh, let's uh, get into the ipl aspect of it first because he is the longest standing he has the longest standing association with with a particular franchise uh, right. chennai super kings and he led the team to title they, they were finalists multiple times under him and he built a very successful franchise over there i mean successful over i mean the last uh, 11 years of ipl uh, csk is the most successful team but csk is the most controversial team also True. and it was right in embroiled right uh, right in the middle of the match fixing controversy that it hit ipl along with uh, rajasthan royals and uh, understandably at that point dhoni was silent about it because it was under subjudice it was under investigation also uh, but then post whatever the decisions and the suspension of of csk and then reinstatement of csk into the ipl i feel as a skipper because he has a larger role here he's not just a mere play- player because Absolutely. indian cricket team skipper is is a figure which is larger than the con- i mean uh, the game itself in as far as the country is concerned it's evident from the kind of tributes that has come out mm-hmm. for him after he retired and he, he is still silent there is no clarity one documentary which was produced by csk he spoke about how testing it was for the players who, were, who had done no wrong Mm-hmm. as far as he knows and he he equated match fixing to be worse than uh, murder because cricket has made him so if he fixes match or if any of the players fixes match it will be worse than worse mm-hmm. than the biggest crime that a man can ever commit so but then these are all sweeping i mean border lying uh, i mean not touching anything specific exactly. no details so yeah, yeah so so uh, as, as far as cleaning that slate was concerned the best would have been to present what exactly happened as far as the team setup is concerned just to explain that the team was clean because now when as outsiders when we look at it the team was penalized because they did something wrong and and the people who were penalized were the guys who were involved in the team management not and in the coterie outside the playing playing 15 or the squad for sure but still when the team is penalized and then when there is silence about what exactly the player stands and the player's position right. was at that point right. then then doubts come in how can a team be wrong and players be clear but these are just doubts and i what i am just saying was that as as keeper of indian team the the stature that dhoni had risen he, he could have risen above it all by just clarifying it all together right. but then again he has i mean he has shown that he is just an indian cricketer that way because we have someone like sachin tendulkar who was right in the who was god of cricket when match fixing happened Absolutely. in the indian team setup and yeah. even in his biography he just he just didn't find it right right worthy enough to be right. to be clarified so yeah, exactly. that's how that's how it it works here i mean so what we what we, what we do have is someone who 
perform admirably on the field, both as a batsman, as a wicketkeeper, as a captain, but also someone who came in as an outsider, but also became, in some senses, very much an insider and part of the core establishment. Exactly. That's 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 the kind of assessment that I would look at it. And I I feel that that's how that's how Indian cricket is set up. You can't be an outsider forever and stand out or or take it forward. So Dhoni had to be part of the setup and I had to accept whatever the right. the status quo is as far as a skipper should be or a player in the Indian team. So that, you, you become a system man. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leslie, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from the country. Until then, keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.